Stop Now, a social experiment enterprise. Hello and welcome to Stop Now. I'm Nate. I'm JK and we have a special guest today. Uh, let's welcome him and absolutely yeah i'm excited for this conversation we're going to have today jk because uh you know there's been a lot of talk in the news about the stock market and and money and and game stop but we're not talking about those kind of stocks this week we're talking about the stock market of ideas and to do that we're going to bring on our guest cesari yurovich and cesari thank you so much for taking time out this week man can you let the audience know a little bit about yourself and a little bit about uh, what you do thank you very much for having me Nate and jk uh, so about my a little bit about myself uh i studied philosophy and economics and actually music Surprisingly, mm. that goes really well with all of those things. Um, and yeah, so I, I got an interdisciplinary studies degree, really seeing the commonalities. And really, I, I like to joke that real philosophers study economics <laughs> instead of <laughs> philosophy. I mean, there are some good philosophy courses, but don't get a degree on that. You know, if you're going to get a degree in uh, something philosophical, do economics. Um, so there is a lot of intersection there. And and it really, uh, by a long chain of events, the idea came up for the International Logic Party because the worldwide stock market of ideas is actually a tool that primarily it's intended for the International Logic Party to organize. Mm. The International Logic Party, it's a political party that instead of representing an ideology, it represents a process that is guided by the value of rationality above all else. And so it's open to any ideas from around the world. It has to be, you know, so that it's self-refining, uh, it's self-correct. Yeah, uh, not to talk, I'm not going to talk too much about the party right now, but because the platform itself, the Igora, world, the worldwide stock market of ideas, it's actually all open to any other organization to organize themselves as well, mm. uh, because it's such a versatile and such a useful tool. And very quickly to summarize how that works is that each person develops their own philosophy, political philosophy, but it's like an existential, social, economic uh, type of, and even personal, some personal ideas. So each person develops their own ideological profile out of various different ideas. Those ideas could have been written by you or they could have been written by someone else. It doesn't matter. It's not like Facebook comments. It's uh, the point is that the idea actually speaks for you. It represents what's inside your mind. Mm. And if somebody else wrote that, you can take it and you can use it. You can modify it. You can do anything you want with it. You can pass it on and share it. But as each person develops their own philosophy, we share those ideas. And the best of those ideas rise to the top on what's called an idea dominance index. And that, that shows all the different ideas from around the world. And then according to that index, then we can cross-reference the index to people's ideological profiles to create a list of political candidates who most closely represent the will of the people. Mm. And that's that's how the party gets its candidates. There's more to it. I'm not going to get into the details right now. But so that's actually the main Igora. But we have expanded it to have two other Igoras because we're doing that on the national and international level. But we also have the municipal Igora so that people can organize ideas just within their towns, village or city, any, you know wherever you live, you, you can do that uh, more effectively in your municipality. But then there is also the community Igora and the community Igora allows you to participate in many different communities. Um, some of them you can create uh, what, for whatever interest. It could be like a labor union, a student government, mm. It could be your church. It could be uh, even even more more likely, like if a corporation, like a public co corporation, wanted to use it, they would take this platform and just create their own version of it. But so this can be a way for like employee-owned businesses can direct like how they want their businesses to run to give the workers, the employees, and the shareholders greater control over what the company is doing or the business is doing, and. But anyway, so there are these various communities, but some of the other default communities that everybody is a part of is, well, there's one, Igora development, so that we can refine the system. People can introduce ideas about how to make the system better. Uh, there's like stories we should all hear, truths we should all know, mm. uh, world's biggest challenges. There's also businesses to boycott, so we can organize you know, a boycott 
target specific businesses, but also give people alternatives. Mm. We should not be purchasing from this business because of its business practices. Instead, we should be directing our business to these other businesses because they're doing better business. Or like media, we can trust. We can, you know, that's another community to organize people to raise awareness about these media sources being more trustworthy. And so there are so many different applications for this technology and it's open for even other political parties can use it to organize. Uh, it's open to that. We don't get jealous because we're that good. <laughs> so I guess what, what was kind of the impetus, you know, behind this? Like was, was there something where you kind of looked out uh, and, and saw a void or saw a need uh, for a platform like this? You know, what was kind of the nuts and bolts, I guess, of bringing this out? Great question. Um, really, the, the way this came about is that I came home one day and I was like looking on Facebook and this is right around the time. Well, this was 2018. Mm -hmm. So this is before I, I think this is after Trump got elected. Yeah. So Trump's yeah. in office. And I'm just looking at like Facebook and the news. I'm like, why is politics so illogical? And I'm like, why is there a political <laughs> party that just tries to be freaking logical? You know, mm -hmm. like what the, what the heck? And so I thought, I'm like, okay, well, let's say there is a logic party. How would that actually look? And so that's where I realized it had to be about the process. It basically, and I'll give you a secret. That's not really a secret. The point is, is that this system is biased. It's a very biased system and it's biased towards rationality. Mm. It's, it's intended to be a system where philosophers have the advantage over the demagogues. That people who, you know, just give you BS stories yeah, those things don't really fly in Angora. They just don't get there. They're, they're not substantial enough. It, it's a system where real ideas, real solutions are the ones that rise. And that's exactly what it does. Mm. And that's actually, you know, that's actually a problem. Not to talk too much. I know I, I have so much to say. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the problem with it is that it works. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. Because it means that people actually have to do be the responsible citizens that they were intended to be, that people have to think, people have to make the decisions, the difficult, and not with the very specific minute details, but the general big picture things. People actually have to think. It's not about thinking in slogans. It's about thinking in solutions. You know? mm. Well, one of the things, like, I, I love what you're talking about in terms of bringing that logic, bringing that rationality, you know, into the political space, but you know, you you studied economics, so you you know full well, like most of our viewers do, that a big part of our modern day politics is that financial component. And so, like, how 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 is logic going to be able to kind of overcome, you know, the inherent flaws, I guess, in the political system right now, where so much money equals so much influence, which equals people acting irrationally because it benefits their bo their bottom line. I, I just want to real quick draw the distinction between economics and finances, because it sounded like you were kind of going in, in that direction. And, you know, that's, that's one of the, that's one of the things is that the reason that we took a development course from the main Igora with the international and national level ideas, mm -hmm. the municipal and the community, it's because those ideas are actually too big for a lot of people. A lot mm. of people are ill-equipped to really analyze. Like most people haven't studied economics. And I, this might sound elitist or arrogant. Well, it's, it is elitist. Actually, people who study economics are the elite. Like politicians, like, see, the thing is that the, pro the solutions to our problems, they're there. Mm. And people know what they are. The problem is that the politicians don't listen to the experts, which is e economists. Like economists generally agree on a lot of different things. Mm. The politicians don't do that because it's not what's going to get them the votes. So they're like economists know what to do. They have right. You know, they're just not listening to it because it's not you know it's not what the interest group groups want. Um, so you know this whole system I call it intelligent democracy. It's not democracy. It's not. It's really mm. not. Because you actually interface with the system by developing and by publishing your philosophy. People have a tendency to call this voting for ideas. It's not voting for ideas. It's investing in ideas. Because it's not, you know, when you cast a vote, you know, you check off a box, you throw that ballot in the box, and then you're mm -hmm. done, right? It's like, oh, I'm finished. There's right. no record of accountability. But that's not how the ideological profile works. That, philo that philosophy is there. 
and you are only supporting those ideas as long as they're a part of your philosophy. Mm. If you decide to, oh, wait, I don't like this idea anymore. I want to support this other idea. That vote is gone. You know, it's not a vote because it's not just a vote. It, it has to be constant and ongoing, you know, rather than just this one time at this point in time, everybody votes and then we're all finished for the next four years. Yeah. So it, it's but, a very different, it's a very different process. And I, like, I, I feel like I'm kind of going uh, on a tangent here, but I like, I like the, uh, I like the journey that we're taking here, Cesare. So, you know, you brought up uh, Trump a, a little while ago. Yeah. And I think of another component to politics is maybe not so much the message but the messenger and we see that you know you talk about are there news sources that are more reliable than others more truthful and fact-based than others and it brings me immediately back to what happened in America on January 6th and so like how how do we get to a place in America specifically uh, where ideas and knowledge and information and intellectual curiosity is something that is not looked upon as, you know, oh, that's elitist. That's some coastal idea. Like, where do we get to the point where we actually have an informed electorate? Using aura. I mean, but that's it, you know, because, you know, I, I you know, I promote this all the time. I talk, mm. I've talked to tens of thousands of people about this, literally tens of thousands of people. Um, but <clears throat> there are so many, for all the people who love discussing, talking about democracy, there's very few people who actually want to do it, who actually do it. Mm -hmm. So like if you and I are, are going to discuss some issues, I'm, I'm not going to discuss issues with you like in general. I don't care. I, but if you have a specific solution for me, then I'm all ears. I mm -hmm. want to know what, it, what is your solution? I want to see the other solutions because maybe we're not even ready to talk about that solution. Maybe there are some other things I need to know that you know before we, we can even touch upon the subject. I mean, we're talking about complete cultural transformation. And I mean, that, that's how deep this goes because that's how big this is. It's, I mean, I mean, I'm asking you and everyone else to develop and publish your own political philosophy, you know? That's uh, Cesare, uh, just to jump in here, like uh, if I heard you correct, uh, so I see that like you want to control the government. Is that what like you control your government? <laughs> you are wearing that. So is that the idea? I'm telling you to control your government. What's that? I'm telling you to control your government. <laughs> so exactly. So the governance part is right. The, uh, people have this uh, idea implanted in their uh, mind. Ideas are inserted in the early stages and uh, you think that like the government controls you. Many people like even uh, uh, highly educated and uh, uh, in a good status as well, they think that like, oh, your government controls everything. They let you do like what, they tell you like what to do. And even with the controversy of the pandemic, right? Uh, whether uh, forcing us to wear masks and get vaccinated. So, so how does that like uh, you think this platform will be able to uh, have this idea and discussion that it's not the government that controls you you can control the government how do you think that is possible to change the course of the there are there are a couple questions because you did ask some good questions and i didn't quite get around to answering them i was talking about a couple other things so i definitely want to address that but because the, the thing is, what I was saying is that we're taking a deep a kind of a sidetrack from these main, of course, we're discussing these big economic, you know, issues. But I was saying that most people aren't ready for that. And that's why we have, there are three Igoras also. There are the, there's the municipal Igora. Because mm -hmm. uh, if you're going to talk about the money supply, you know, how do we control the money? What should be the money supply versus things like, you know, let's turn this empty lot into a park. Or something you know so that's why the municipal igora exists because those are much easier issues for people to to take on at this time uh before people start investing themselves more into growing their their knowledge about economics and and other things so so we do need yeah we're gonna get there before most people can engage at that level to discuss some of those bigger 
uh, bigger issues. So that's why the municipal Igor exists, because like ideas about idea ideas about whether to end the Fed and you know have a money supply that's controlled by the people is a much different idea whether to put a stop sign at first and Main Street, right, or something like that, or put a you know those are much more tangible, like much closer, much easier ideas. So that's why we have the municipal Igor. Like for example, one you know one idea that I support from Chicago is about uh, well first of all we should need to fix all the potholes in our roads because it looks it's like a war zone in a developing country i mean it's ridiculous this is chicago and or you know that's a much easier idea to express and, mm -hmm. and get behind and then there is also the community agora for any other community to organize those other issues that they're simpler than than things about like monetary policy and tax theory so that's supposed to be more uh easier for people to the gateway kind of gateway ideas and then the other thing that uh, you brought up nate was about you know about money i think you were talking about yeah. money in, in politics the the number one problem that igora is supposed to solve because this is what's important um is that if we have a society of just like a few dozen or a few hundred people you know, like we have a village, you know, just a, a few hundred households, right? Mm -hmm. You, if you're the, the denizen of that, of that town, within one week, if you think you have a good idea for what everybody, for w what we in, in the town should do, you could spend a whole week talking to everybody and you could actually communicate your message to everyone in your town, right? right. That's your entire community. That's possible. Or, or like you could have a town meeting. And you know you could speak, and everybody can speak and be heard. But in a society of millions, or even billions of people, like you have in China, right, or India, I mean, that's you're never going to do that. You're never going to talk to everybody. But guess who can? Donald Trump can. You know, you know, Bill Gates can. You mm -hmm. know, people who have money. So basically, money becomes speech, right? Mm. And so, and that's a problem. And Igora exists specifically to solve that problem. That is the biggest problem that it's solving. It's that problem of scale that we can communicate in a society of millions or billions of people with the same efficiency, with the same level of democracy as people in a small town can. So that's, that's what you have to look at. That's the biggest problem that we're solving here. Uh, that's, well, that, that's actually the initial problem. But there is another problem that we're solving. It's that people are uninformed. And mm -hmm. and or misinformed, misinformed. But generally, it's it's a you're misinformed because you're uninformed. Mm. It's you're easily misinformed if you're uninformed, uneducated. Um, like there are so many things that people should know, and there. But there is a reason why people are not that educated. Is because it doesn't pay. You know, if you're gonna spend your time in a system where you don't have a democracy, is it worth your time to educate yourself about all these different policies? when instead you could be working on developing your skills and mm -hmm. increase your income by so much. Whereas if you educate yourself, you're not really gonna do all that much. It doesn't make sense to get yourself educated. But when the people have the power, then the people become smarter because it actually pays to be educated and to have for your voice to be informed. So that's another problem that we're solving. And that's actually the second, I'd say that's even bigger. That's even more important. But that's only like, it only comes later as a, as a result of trying to solve that other problem. Then we're also solving the problem that people become, we turn people into philosophers. Mm. Um, so how do you define like, what is Igora? Like it is like socializing and coming in together. Is that the platform you're referring? Or how do you put it? You're developing your ideological profile. It's your portfolio of ideas. Those are the different ideas you support. Mm. And you know, each person does that. If you and I are going to have a conversation, JK, uh, if we're going to discuss some ideas, I, it's, it's very much like, you know, like when you're applying for a job and you submit your resume, like this is so that the employer gets to know what you're about and you research the company. So you know what the company is about. Cause maybe you don't want to work for this company. Maybe it doesn't have enough opportunities for you. Uh, or maybe you disagree with its values or, or something. You don't like the workspaces. So you do your research. And they do your, their research. They learn about you. And then you sit down and you have a meeting. And then you actually discuss things in detail. So this is working at the same, you know, in, with the same principle, is that if you and I are going to have a discussion, I want to study your philosophy. I want to look 
what should we even talk about? Like, what, what are the important topics we should start discussing? You, mm. you learn about me. And then we sit down and then we actually, then we have the discussion about the, the try to establish a common ground and then make progress from that common ground. Okay, so well, why why this platform? Is, is this like a, a platform free for all, or how is it going to create an impact? Oh, wait, did you say is it free? Is was that? What yeah, you? yeah, yeah. It's free, available to anybody and everybody, anywhere in the world. Um, I mean, I thought that at this point, your question should be answered. How is it going to make an impact? I mean, it makes people smarter. It, it's easier to fool people. You know, like one of the things that I, I like to say is that this system does not require you to do anything more than what you should be already doing as a responsible citizen. And so those things are, one, if you want to control your government, which you should want as a responsible citizen, that's your job really, it's essentially, it's your purpose, uh, you have to know what you want from your government. Because if you don't know what you want from your government, how are you ever going to control it? You have to have your list of demands. Mm -hmm. What do you want? Like, actually, what, what do you want? How, how are you going to be in any position to criticize anything if you don't know what you want? So show us what you want. Develop your political philosophy, you know, your list of demands, your list of principles, your direction, you know, your agenda, whatever you want, your ideological profile. Develop your philosophy. So that's the number one step. I think you should be doing that. If, if you can't do that, you have no position to, you're in no position to complain or about anything. So, so in layman terms, right? In layman terms, I'm asking, how is it possible? Like I'm putting in my profile and my ideas and demands, who's going to listen? You need to publish your philosophy. If you did a good job, if you, if you developed a good political philosophy, you should publish it, share it with other people so other people can benefit from it, you know, other, make other people smarter. Mm -hmm. Or if you made mistakes, publish it so other people can look at it and be like, hey, JK, your philosophy, it doesn't make sense. There's something wrong with this. You're misinformed. So other people can evaluate your philosophy. So that's, you know, whether it's good or bad, everybody benefits if you publish it. And then the third thing you should do is to come together with other responsible citizens and discuss your philosophy. Uh, you know, actually discuss it in real time. It's much more efficient. It's just, you know, that's the real essential component of democracy. So mm. you should be doing all of those things. And so that's exactly what this platform does. It enables us to do what we should already be doing. It just enables us to do that much more efficiently. Um, I mean, that's what you should be doing as a responsible citizen if you want to control your government. I mean, you're not going to do it any other way. How else would you do it? Mm. It makes, absolutely makes no sense. Well, so, in, in the process of developing the platform, like, you know, we've talked about kind of misinformation. We've, we've talked about the disinformation. We've talked about, you know, being uninformed as, a, uh, as an electorate. Uh, what would you say has been the biggest shift in people's, you know, kind of political interaction, you know, during the time you were develop, developing this platform? Was it that information gap? Was it, you know, tribalism? Like what, what would you say are, you know, kind of the biggest issues right now with our politics? Uh, just to answer JK's question real quick, other responsible citizens will, will listen to you. I mean, however many there are. I mean, you have to take what you got. You have to work with what you got. I don't know how many responsible citizens there are in the United States. Out of 350 million people, maybe it's only... 350 or maybe it's like 35 million mm -hmm. or whatever those are the people we're looking for and we're looking to organize and we're looking to organize efficiently and effectively so that's that's what we're working with um now about the about the issues i think what's been quite fascinating uh nate just to answer your, your question is that there there have been some interesting ideas that have been proposed that are in igora that i've been sharing with a lot of other people Mm -hmm. And the universal basic income is the mm -hmm. number one idea, and it's the number one idea by far. And I know that this is a good idea, and it, I think it's really fascinating to see that other people are also so strongly supportive of it. As uh, I, I mean, we could discuss the details of why I, you know this is a good idea, but this would be a longer discussion. Uh, but it's it's kind of encouraging to see that people also see that there are so many different cascading effects 
of, of that idea because it affects our immigration policy. It affects our, um, you know, crime. Mm-hmm. I mean, if, if you're giving an op- the, the choice to a criminal, should I commit this petty crime for a little bit of money or should I continue getting the universal basic income and keep my freedom? What are most criminals going to do, you know? Or yeah. crime of passion. Uh, you know, people who are trapped in relationships that they, you know, they're financially dependent on one another. They're struggling. Guess what? All of a sudden, people don't have to struggle with that anymore. They can separate. They don't have to kill each other, you know? So so it's like there's so many effects, and it's it's fascinating to, to be exploring that. Um, I guess what's interesting is in the current politics is how ignored this, you know, Andrew Yang was bringing this to the forefront with his campaign. Uh, it has kind of died out, but but it's mm. still there. People are still talking about it. People are organizing. Um, this I think this idea is definitely on the rise. It's being implemented in various trials, you know, in different places around the world. Does that answer your question? Yeah, because I saw and I can't exactly remember what network I saw it on, but I remember you know a few months ago I saw a study uh, about, uh, and I want to say it was the mayor of some city in California. Yeah, something like that, yeah. And they did the study about, you know, we're going to see how you uh, universal basic income works in practice. And like you said, the, the results were generally positive uh, for, for the folks that were in this study. And so when you've got an idea like that, or when you've got an idea like, you know, um, universal health care, or, or some of these other things that people have talked about for years, but have never really seen to gain that mainstream traction is something like uh igora is that something like uh this platform is that something that can be used to kind of generate more of these ideas regardless of whether you know they take hold because i think that's a separate conversation cesari whether we can implement these things but is this a system where we can come up with these ideas and, and and have these discussions that a lot of people aren't having right now Definitely. A- an idea can be anything. It could be one word. It could be one book. It's up to you to express. And it's up to every one of us to express good ideas, however we think is effective. You know, it, an idea should be detailed enough to, you know, to so people understand what it really means. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it should be short and co- compact enough so that people actually want to read it and want to familiarize yourself with it. A good idea, I think, deserves to be read multiple times mm. because then it's like, okay, I read the first part, then I read the second part, and then I want to see, now I understand how this other part is modifying this other part or specifying it. So so it should be short. It should be very dense and, and meaningful. Uh, but then again, you know, we're it, it's in a constant process of evolution, you know, because somebody might take an idea they might copy and edit it and create their own version of it and add more to it. And all of a sudden, mm. maybe there are certain ideas that only work if they're combined together. And so, you know, so we're, we're still seeing what, you know, you could put a, put together a whole policy, you know, a, a specific, you know, a, spe- a law, you could actually, that could be an idea in itself. And you could introduce that. It, what, whatever, whatever wins the day, it's, it's hard to predict. Mm. You, you talked about the, you know, UBI being something that, that you saw uh, and, and that you, you were really behind. What are some other kind of ideas or policy positions or things that people have posted? Like, are there one or two that really kind of stood out to you as something that would be beneficial, you know, to our, our current climate? Um, you know, another idea that has a lot of support is uh, drug legalization. Just mm. legalize everything. Uh, and put more money into healthcare, uh, you know, to help people get off addictions. It's because it, you're just doing nothing but, uh, you know, just creating a black market and giving violent criminals a source of income, mm-hmm. by making drugs illegal. A lot of people seem to get that. Um, and it ties into the incarceration rate as well, particularly when you talk about, you know, communities of color or communities where, where you find low income people that are serving these sentences for minor offenses. Bingo. Bingo. Yeah. So, so many of these things. Yeah. So many obvious things that really people get that the politicians aren't doing. Mm. You know? And have you felt like any threat? Like, I mean, people trying to shut you down or... Mm. 
no criticize you strongly i don't think we're in in that position yet um one interesting example i want to bring up there is this uh there was this initiative in poland and there is actually something in italy it was called the five star movement uh from from what i heard is that, that it was kind of similar to what we're doing actually mm-hmm. i could i'd be happy to explain but none of these uh initiatives are actually as good as what we're doing because they're all trying to be controlling they're all trying to control it too much this is radical freedom like this is radical real free speech because all these other initiatives they all wanted to guide they all wanted to be democratic but they all wanted to really guide it towards a certain agenda but mm-hmm. no not here this is really radical true freedom say whatever you want there is no central moderation of this platform the users actually moderate it because there is a way for people to comment on ideas well it's up to the people which ideas support those are the ones that rise up mm. everybody's speaking for themselves and everybody has a voice and we don't moderate that so if some if if an idea is a part of your profile that's your philosophy if somebody has a problem with that if a government has a problem with that well go talk to that person uh guess what if we think if we think that they're right we're going to stand with that person and we're going to we're going to take down that government if that if that's what it comes down to so uh, anyways point is is and and like comments people can comment on ideas they're not mo- these comments are not moderated centrally like you don't get you don't report people to the to the moderators you know like that's not how this works you vote whether to keep or delete this comment mm-hmm. and and if a certain number of users vote to delete a comment then um it it's not because you disagree with it i mean people can delete or keep a comment for whatever reason they want but uh but ultimately the the principle is that it's it's a genuine comment even if you disagree with it but still if if somebody de- deletes if a bunch of people decide to delete your comment because they disagree with it that's fine because it's not it's not about the comments it's about you building support for that idea and really the way to do that is to actually come to our meetings come to our citizen assemblies because that's the real deal the comments mm-hmm. are only there just to be an online engagement tool they're not there to protect your free speech uh the free speech happens in our meetings and that's up to each organizer of each meeting to make sure that they create a space for dissenting opinions to be heard mm-hmm. so so there are many different components that balance each other within within this but um what i wanted to say so there was an initiative in in italy and i don't know how they're doing right now but there was like the five star movement but i'm more familiar with the one in poland cuz actually I, i speak polish so i could understand it it was very it was kind of similar to igora and they even had like 40,000 people they almost had 40,000 people on their platform um but their their website it was horrendous to look at and the other thing was that the moderators of the platform reserved the right to edit the ideas to mm. like correct them you know to make you know to fix them up you know and and they only wanted to hear the majority opinions you know because they were there their premise was that the politicians aren't working for the people but the people have a general consensus about a number of things mm-hmm. so they are there to support those main opinions but if you had a minority opinion sorry it, you it did not belong you know so it was it was kind of like the chinese version of capitalism it was capitalism but like mm. state controlled capitalism mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that's literally what they were doing and but here we're talking about like wild west freedom of expression of ideas um and and, and not, not to say that people are like shooting each other like in the wild west it's actually very civil it, it, <laughs> but it's just real freedom of of speech and perspective so um but The reason I bring that up to answer your question JK is that the leader of that initiative uh well it collapsed for some reason because that guy stepped away and so there's a story uh, from what I heard I talked to one of the other organizers that was uh all of a sudden like they had like a list of people in every region of Poland all these different you know regional organizers that list shrunk by like 60% like mm. kind of overnight the leader kind of disappeared from the scene I mean he's alive but supposedly it was some authorities did actually come after them because they saw them gaining some traction and and yeah they came after them so and in the USA and you know I don't think Poland is as equipped it's a smaller country so it might be easier to keep track of things than in the United States before you you gain a significant number of people that concern is definitely there and, and frankly it's 
it's as soon as we do gain more tra traction, it's going to be inevitable that that will happen. Um, I, I think the biggest thing that can maintain the authenticity of this movement is that anyone can create their own Igora. Anyone can start this up mm -hmm. uh, or other. That's, that's why we're, we're trying to get other communities to actually start using it because it's a culture, you know, it's not just, it's a whole new way of doing things. And, and eventually when there are enough people who know about it and they're like, they just won't take the old standard, you know, they, they won't go with it. They, they know that there's a better way and they will keep going. They will keep pushing. There will always be new leaders rising up with new Igoras and, they can't kill us all, you know, they can't put all of us in prison. They're trying, but, <laughs> but eventually, if enough people are doing it, they, it's unstoppable. Oh, I, was, I was gonna say, I hope nobody's tapping our phones here, tapping the tapping the meetings, but uh, I like, for our viewers out there, cause you did mention uh, something I think is important, Cesari, in terms of new leaders and new ideas and things of that nature. So if our viewers out there, they, they want to get involved. They have an idea that maybe we haven't talked about this week. You know, it, how can they, you know, become a part of this? How can they, you know, you talked about attending the meetings. Like, what's the process for that? If we've got some folks out there that, that really want to, you know, get engaged and start thinking about politics in a different way. Thanks for asking that question. Um, go to igora-ilp.org. Uh, it's, uh, I'm sure that's going to be in the description, the program description, but yep. that's E G O R A dash I L P dot org. And then you, uh, you register for the platform. Um, it, you do have to register in order to really have all the functionality. You mm -hmm. can look at ideas if, so, if other people share them, but it, it's not that we're trying to hide anything. It's just, that's just the way it was designed. It just, it's just the way it is. When we have a bigger budget, we'll try to make things more uh, visible to the people who might register. But there are just so many different directions to go that it's really hard to show unless you're mm -hmm. already in the site. But once you're in the site, you know, then you know the home screen is your ideological profile. That's where you build your philosophy. There's a meetings section where you can find the meetings uh, where people can post their meetings. So that's how you you come and connect with people through Zoom or whatever other platform. Um, and you know you can share ideas. Like if you have an idea, you can look up other users in the users section. Uh, you can look me up, Cezare, uh, C-E-Z-A-R-Y. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't need my full search name to find me, but you can send me some ideas. If you, have, if you think you have good ideas, uh, you can in include them into the system. And then when you follow people, you can send, send your ideas to other people and for, their, you know, for their examination. Mm. Very good, very good. I guess my last question, because I know we're running short on time here, Cesare, uh, and this is something I, I like to kind of check in with our guests and see kind of where they're at and has their view on things changed because of what everybody's collectively gone through since March of last year. Um, and in terms of, I guess, the way people interact and then the exchange of ideas, have you seen have you seen the conversation get better or worse, I guess, is my question since the pandemic started. Have people kind of been more open to expressing ideas about how the system can change for the better? You know, I have to say the pandemic has been quite good for us. In some ways, it's been good. In some ways, it's been bad. Overall, I think it's, it's good because, see, I used to organize these meetings in person. Mm -hmm. I've been organized like six meetings all around Chicago. And I would go to these different locations and like organize them in restaurants. So people would actually have to spend money to go to that meeting. But now by doing it on Zoom, uh, we can bring people from all around the city. You know, they can all go to one location and they don't even have to travel. So Zoom has been good uh, for that, for yeah, bringing people from all around and coming together. And, and actually, you know, what's fascinating is when we do have people from around the world, and we're talking about some, like I said, some economic, some bigger issues like uh, like economics or even some social issues. The thing is, you, you're not going to know that somebody's from another country unless they tell you. Because mm -hmm. they're dealing with the same problems that we're dealing with over here. Like, like you won't know un, until you get into some local issues. It's not a problem. And as long as people focus on the actual solving the problems, the proposing solutions, people are very collaborative. Um, it's, you know, it's funny because we once had this meeting and everything was going to, you know, the order was maintained within the meeting. But as soon as we 
so people were from different perspectives but as soon as the meeting finished and the people just spoke freely then it just erupted into a fight <laughs> but as long as you know we follow the format everything right <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, and that's the, the other thing that we say is stand up for ideas, not for faces or, or something like that. That's one of the opening notes is we want you to take a stand for ideas, not faces. And yeah. when yeah. people do that, yeah, people actually, it works great. The things about Igora is it's intended for real people only. So it's not about anonymity. In the mm. long run, we're not doing this right now, but yes, in the future, it will require that we check people's identifications and make sure that they are real people. And that's, that's a part of maintaining people's right to free speech. Um, the platform is pretty much text only. And one of the big, the, the big reasons for that is so that we don't have to moderate like things like pornography and especially certain, I don't even want to name it, but certain very illegal forms of uh, like very exploitative pornography. Mm. Um, so we don't have to worry about this kind of stuff because if somebody does post something that's, like really actually just really bad right yeah, and then we don't have to worry about moderating it but we know that this is a real person and if the authorities within that country you know if, if it's something exploitative then they can go after that person and deal with them directly instead of us having to moderate it at the same time if it's somebody in china speaking up for freedom of speech well then rather than helping the government go after that person we can help that person go after their government mm. so uh, so yeah actually it's about but right now we're not doing that it's simply because we're trying to grow uh, we do need more people to take this seriously once people see the value of it in it and trust the system more and see get see this collective power grow then we can uh, concern ourselves with making sure that you know eliminating trolls or bad actors by uh, by actually checking identification but but that's not happening in right now. We're just assuming everybody is genuine uh, in these early stages. No, we're, yeah. we're trying to build a movement here. Yeah. Thank you so much, Zare. It's wonderful talking to you. Right. Yeah, real pleasure uh, speaking with you guys. Thank you so much for having me. here. Most definitely. Thank you for your time, of course. Cesare Jurovich, Igora, the Worldwide Stock Market of Ideas. Uh, for again, you know, for the folks out there that want to get in contact with you, uh, we definitely encourage them to check check it out and you know keep this conversation going, keep this movement, as you said, going. So we we thank you for your time, and hopefully we can talk to you again down the road. Well, one thing I always say at the end is I invite and I challenge you to my ideological profile. Check out my ideas. I think I have some good ideas. If you like them, support them. If you think you have better ideas, I want to see them. I want to hear mm. them. So. All right. Well, thank you so much, Cesare. Uh, I guess that, that's, that's going to do it for this week, JK. And then we'll talk to the good folks out there next time. Bye for now. Bye, Bye for now. <laughs> Stop now. A social experiment enterprise. Stop. Listen. Share. Everyone can make a difference. We are on a mission. Everyone should do something greater in their lifetime. Change the future. Be a proud member. Join us to support, volunteer, and donate.